Hey guys, welcome back to YouTube channel. It's your girl Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Thank you for 21,000 subscribers. You guys are the best. Keep subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing everything that you guys do. Please motivate me by giving me stuff to react to. Just drop me the name or the link in the comment section below and I'll be more than glad to react to it. So today I'm going to be reacting to 10 biggest lies about Islam. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. We have heavily been exploring the religion of Islam here in FTD Facts and over time we have found a collection of misconceptions and myths and some straight up lies about Islam and in this episode we're going to be looking at 10 of the biggest lies about the religion of Islam. Welcome back to FTD Facts guys, my name is Leroy Kenton. We got a very interesting episode coming right up so make sure you watch from 10 all the way down to 1 because I don't want you to miss any of the information that I'm going to be sharing in this episode. The first First lie is Muslims worship a moon god. So some non-Muslims mistakenly believe that Allah is an Arab god or a moon god or some type of idol. However, Allah is in the Arabic language a proper name for God and Arabic speaking Christians also use the name Allah for God. Now one of the main factors of this belief is because one of the first uses of the crescent moon came from the 2nd century BC where it represented the ancient Mesopotamian moon god Nana. And now today the crescent moon is associated with Islam. So many non-Muslims say, well, look, you worship the moon god. There's even a moon in the symbol of your religion. Next up at number nine, most Muslims are Arabs. Okay, so Islam is often associated with Arab people. But did you know that Arabs make up only 15% of all Muslims? The country with the largest Muslim population is actually Indonesia. And large numbers of Muslims are also found in Asia, Africa, Europe, as well as other parts of the world. Muslims are encouraged to learn Arabic because they believe that the only language that you can really get the full extent of the Quran is in Arabic. Islam oppresses women. Practices like forced marriage, spousal abuse are actually things that contradict Islamic law and most of the bad treatment towards women actually come from people's own evil natures and their own cultures and their beliefs and it's completely separate from the faith of Islam itself. Muslims are extremists. Now this is a big one. Many Muslim leaders and scholars frequently speak out against all forms of extremism and they offer different explanations and interpretations of Muslim teachings that have been twisted by others to promote extremism. Muslims believe the entire Quran taken as a complete text gives a message of hope as well as peace and faith and good virtues and any form of extremism cannot be justified under proper interpretation of the Islamic faith. Oh boy! Islam is intolerant of other faiths. Muslims are constantly reminded that they are not the only ones who worship God. Specifically, Jews and Christians are called the people of the book in the Quran, meaning that those are people who also received previous revelations from God and are also can be seen as true worshipers of God. Also in Surah 2 verses 256 in the Quran, it says, there is no compulsion in religion. And this is interpreted to mean that you cannot force anyone Want to become a Muslim, you still got to respect other people's beliefs. Halfway in at number five, jihad means holy war. So jihad in Arabic does not mean holy war. It actually means to strive or to struggle or to persevere. And jihad can be something that's done personally or can also involve a community. So in effect, jihad really means to become closer to God. And this type of struggle, jihad, is to ensure that a peaceful and equitable community still continues to exist. Of course, self-defense is is acceptable to protect yourself and your community from any sort of like dangers. However, any form of offensive aggression is prohibited in Islam. All right, number four, Islamic prayer doesn't really have any meaning. Most people now know that Muslims are to pray five times a day. And now in Islam, there are several benefits to prayer. The daily prayers help keep Muslims minds on God and it helps Muslims to remember the Quran because they recite passages of the Quran as well as it's a time to go before God to express thanks, to ask for forgiveness, to look for guidance in your life. So there's a whole lot of meaning for Muslims when it comes to prayer. All right, number three, Jesus is completely irrelevant in Islam. That's actually not true. Jesus, however, is revered as a prophet and the Messiah in Islam. The Islamic faith believes that Jesus will return as a Messiah and defeat the Antichrist. This view is also very similar to the Christian view. The only difference is that Muslims don't view Jesus as the Son of God. He's just seen as a 
profit when you compare it to the Christian faith. All right, guys, we got two more left. So the crescent moon is a universal symbol of Islam. It's actually, yeah, it's not. Okay, so the early Muslim community did not really have any sort of symbols or anything. Now the crescent moon, as well as the star symbol, they actually predate Islam by several thousands of years. And as a matter of fact, they weren't affiliated with Islam at all until the Ottoman Empire placed it on their flag. And over time, the symbol became more associated with Islam. But it's not actually their official symbol. That just doesn't exist. And the number one biggest lie, myth, misconception, about Islam is that Muhammad is the founder of Islam and Muslims worship him. Muslims believe that Muhammad was God's final prophet and communicated God's final revelation to humanity. Muslims consider Adam, the first man created, to actually be the first Muslim because he was, of course, surrendered to the will of God, and that's what the term Muslim means, one who surrenders to the will of God. Muhammad is held in great esteem, but he's not to be worshipped because worship is only meant to be directed towards God and it's completely forbidden to worship anyone or anything else. Muslims may, however, celebrate Muhammad's birthday similar to the way that Americans celebrate Martin Luther King Jr. Day. All right, guys, so that's all I have for you in this episode. This was your brief look at 10 misconceptions, myths, and lies about Islam. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below about anything that I mentioned in this episode and also what other lies do you know about it'll be interesting to see what you guys comment below and don't forget guys I take requests on FTD facts so if you have any suggestions for future videos also put those below as well now for all you amazing awesome overachievers who made it to the end here's another video that you definitely want to check out also my social media links are below in the video description section so you can follow me over there as well and if you haven't done so already hit that subscribe button ring that bell to join the FTD facts family and keep up to date with our daily episodes okay guys you have been super awesome I can't wait to see you in the next episode a big shout out to the FTD facts and how they compile uh, their videos, their facts. Um, it's interesting that all these myths exist, but the beauty is if there's anyone Muslim out there, I always say, you know what, come out and explain to someone how th that, that myth is just ridiculous. Um, when it comes to the symbol of Islam, so what exactly is the symbol of Islam? Because people have seen the use of the moon and the star together. So how, yes, the Ottoman Empire used it on their flag, but then how did it find itself in Islam? That would be something interesting. And another thing was Muslims worship a moon god. Where did this story come from? There's always some... Um, some information as to where these things are coming from. I don't think they worship a moon god, but what's the story behind this? Why is someone saying Muslims worship uh, the moon god? And what's the moon god in the first place? You know, the one that and the other one that speaks about Islam oppressing women. Um, we're all coming from different backgrounds, different cultures, different traditions. Of course what we see as oppression to them they think it's not what they see as oppression to us they we think it's not you know it differs from this person the fifth person hundredth person everything is going to be different and um of course there's all these globalizations we're trying to mix cultures here and there and speak about freedom of this and that otherwise we should respect people and what they believe in we don't have to accept it but we can respect it about the extremist one i refuse to believe the myth that muslims are extremists you know their people were surrounded by muslims right now at least where i am i don't know about you but um were surrounded by muslims and some of them are the kindest people around polite people that will help you when you're in need that will put a smile on your face you know we can't classify all Muslims because of a certain group as all extremists. It's just upset. Let me know what you guys actually think. Those are the few facts prevented, presented by Lyria that I've touched on. If you want to talk about the rest, feel free. What are some of the myths that you've heard? 
and um what do you think about them uh, let me know what video you want me to react to down below just give me the name or the link i'll check it out make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video